How are you doing, Providence? Uh, this is Matt, the missions guy again, uh, just kind of giving you some updates about uh, what's going on around the world um, in the work that we're doing in the gospel. And so we're excited to see how God is continuing to do things. Uh, just even though this quarantine, even though all of these things are going on, um, those things aren't um, stopping us from making, growing, and unleashing disciples. And today, uh, I have with me Rodrigo, our church planter uh, in Nova Campinas. And so uh, we're so excited to have him with us. And, um, and so, Rodrigo, won't you tell us a little bit about how your family's doing and what's going on there? Uh, hello, Matt. Hello, Providence. It's always a pleasure to me to talk to you. And I'm here to, to answer your questions. Uh, we, we're, we're fine now, right? Just waiting on God, what he, he will do in our country, in our church, in our family too. So um, tell me a little bit about the state of Brazil right now in the midst of the quarantine, uh, how they feel. Uh, there's a lot of different feelings in the United States right now about it. Uh, some people are afraid, some people are concerned, some of them uh, are kind of dismissing the situation. How do Brazilians feel? Well, brother, uh, how can I say? At the beginning, uh, we were very afraid about this because it's something really new for, for, for the world, right? So we didn't have a, an idea how things would, would go, right? Uh, and now in Brazil, what's happening is we have a lot of wrong informations because the social medias, uh, we have a lot of questions and wrong informations about this. So we, we have now a kind of panic about this, right? Mm -hmm. So people uh, stayed at home, you have some problems. Uh, with people just went to the market to buy a lot of food, so we had this kind of problem here in Brazil, right? But now people is understanding that we, we need to think better about this, right? I will not, we will not talk about economy or political, but it's something that we need to have uh, patient and, and think about the future, right? So uh, we, have, uh, we need to believe in trust in God, and we, ne we have to follow the informations and the, that we receive for, from our governments. We need to do it, right? Even we don't agree, we don't like them, we just need to follow them. Uh, we are praying for them. Uh, the church in Brazil, not only our church, but the church in Brazil, we are praying a lot for, for this moment. And we believe that God will use this moment for a kind of revival in our nation. Because we are now thinking about what is really important for us, our family, our health, to help people, and to talk about God's love. So for in one side, we have a lot of fear and panic. And in the other side, we can show them a kind of message with peace and hope. So uh, for me, brother, uh, a personal opinion, uh, it's the right moment to think about the future and, and to see what God will do in our country. So for me, I was really afraid with all this happening, but now I'm in peace and I know that something really big will you happen in our country? It's interesting that you would say that, um, just talking about how God can use situations like this. Uh, I do feel like we're entering a time where Christians have a certain amount of peace uh, that holds them um, together in a way that other people do not. Yeah. Uh, so when you are leading your church, how, how are you leading your church in this? What, what is your challenge to them? What are you saying to the church in this time? Yes. Uh, 
well, let, let's see. Uh, the first, I need to have a kind of uh, position. I, I don't know how to say, right? But I need to, to be uh, under control. I don't know how to say this, right? But they need to see me that I trust God. So I, I always have to be a kind of balanced word for them. Right, I, I don't know if it makes sense, but I need to, to give peace for them. And, and I need to lead them through this value, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with peace and trust in God. This is the first one. So I'm using WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube to talk to them about this. So all the messages are about peace and hope. Oh, always, right? This is the first one. The second, we are trying to to keep our people uh, together, unity, right? Uh, so we have our small group meetings with Zoom, for example. Last night we have a meeting with all the church. We have a, a service last night. People at home. So we are trying to do this the things. And the third one. Uh, we have a lot of families in our church that people cannot work at this moment. So they will not have money for, for in future. So what we did was we created a group in our church with people that have um, a better economic situation. So we have those families that we can call them and ask them help to help other families in our church. So we have this. And we could, uh, I don't know if all of you know, but we pay for our build, uh, our rent. And it was a really blessed for us that because we, we could reduce the amount in 30%. So we can use this to help more families in future. So, so we are trying to, to take care of them. Uh, about the soul and heart and financial too. This is what we are trying to do now, brother. Uh, Providence, I, I just want to uh, kind of clarify so you understand what Pastor's saying. He, he's saying that in the midst of this time, they've asked to reduce their rent um, in their building uh, that they use so they could take that money and use it as a resource to help families who may lose their job in the midst of this process or who are in need financially. It's, it's a great opportunity to, to kind of teach us and uh, just remind all of us about uh, what it looks like to continue to invest and to make grow and unleash disciples and to continue on the mission. Um, that's one of the things we love about the church there and, and what a great example it is. Uh, Rodrigo, if you are, Continuing your mission, I know we are about to partner together to plant a church. Um, tell me a little bit about how the church feels about that church plant and, and the excitement about it. Tell me what it means to your church right now to continue to plant churches. Yes, but since the beginning of our church, our dream was to plant other churches, brother. So we were just waiting for the right moment. And... We always talk about this with our leadership in our church, and but we were expecting the right moment. So when this opportunity came to us, it was really interesting because we were not thinking about this at that moment, right? Mm -hmm. But we believe that God uh, is working in, in this moment. And something really interesting in our moment, in our church, was we were praying for God to, to help us to understand what He wants us to do. And we were uh, working in some directions uh, to try to, to come back for some principles in the New Testament. One of them is to plant churches, right? So God just decided to send us some opportunity that 
if we were looking for, we could not do. So God is sending us opportunity to pray more, to, to have more leaders, to plant churches. So we are in peace because we believe it's God's direction for us, right? We are not ready for this. We don't know how to do this, but we know who is able to do and who knows how to do, right? So we are just very happy about this moment. It's something that sometimes we just ask to ourselves how it will be, right? But we trust in God and we are very happy about this. Uh, we're very excited to be part of it too and uh, partner with you in this church plant. Uh, tell me a little bit, uh, tell the folks at Providence a little bit about Londrina, the city. How, how far is it from your church? What, what is the makeup of it? Um, you know, just, just some details so our people can know how mm -hmm. unique this area and this church plant is going to be. Yeah, uh, you see, uh, we, we have a lot of Christians in Brazil, right? When, when you talk about Christians in Brazil, we are almost 85% in Brazil, right? We, we talk about Catholic churches and evangelical churches, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't have a kind of Christianity here in Brazil that we can say we, we are a, a Christian country. We, we cannot say this. So we, we need to have more churches in all the country, right? Uh, Londrina is, um, it's, I believe, it's the, the second most important city in Paraná State, right? Uh, Londrina has almost 700 people, uh, 700,000 people there. And all the informations we have, we need more churches in Londrina. So uh, we need more churches in Campinas. We need more churches in Sao Paulo State, but we need more churches in Londrina. Londrina is far from here, six hours driving, right? So it's not so far from, uh, from us. We can go there and Zeca can come here. So we can have this kind of relation with, with them. And Londrina is, uh, how can I say? It's, it's on the south in Brazil. Uh, it's one region that we believe we need to plant churches now. Our dream is to plant churches in every state in Brazil. Right, just for you to know, it's our dream now, and I don't know how how many time it will take, but we will plant one church in every state in Brazil in the future. Well, that's what we want to do too. Uh, I think it's interesting what you're sharing about how the country uh, would be considered Christian, but maybe not disciples of Jesus is the yes, way. Yes. And so uh, it's, it's so important for churches who have our DNA, and I mean ours as in Providence and yours uh, as Nova Campinas, these churches who have uh, disciple-making DNA and relational gospel. And so uh, we're so excited to be able to partner with you in that and uh, cannot wait to see how God continues to use that, how he continues to work in the things that are going on. Providence, when you are giving and supporting and going on these trips uh, to support these church planners. Uh, the reason behind that is, is not for entertainment. It's not for show. It's not for us to boast. It's, it's for uh, these incredible moments where we get to say that we have churches that are planning churches, such an incredible perspective to have. And that's what we want to be and what we have aspired to be. And, and in a lot of ways, what we already are, we are a church that's planting churches. And so to have Rodrigo uh, in the midst of that and his church and his leadership, uh, understanding that and moving forward, and that is just a great thing. So brother, let me ask you, uh, how can we pray for you? How can we pray for your church, for your country, for your family, uh, for the new church plant. Just share with us some things so that Providence can pray with you. Yes, uh, just pray for us to, to 
continue in this process, right? Uh, we, we, how can I say, brother? Before this crisis about coronavirus, our church was growing and we were very excited about everything that was happening here. Uh, at the first moment, some people were afraid, afraid about this. But just for you to know, we had four small groups before this. This week, you have eight small groups. And probably next week, we'll have 16 small groups. So uh, just to just pray for us to, to have this kind of commitment and continue to trust in God. Uh, we believe that God will provide all of our needs. We believe this. We believe that God is the person more interested about church, about the future of the church. So we, we trust him. Just pray for us, for our leadership, so we can lead the church in, church in this direction, right? Uh, for our country, just for us to understand that God wants to show us something and, and to teach us how we can use this moment for his glory. So it, it's for, for me, it's, it's a good reason to, to pray for us. Well, uh, brother, we are so thankful for you. Uh, I am particularly thankful for your shirt. I think that that represents all that we need to know about uh, you, uh, is that you're a Vol fan, just like us. Uh, yes. So that's a good thing. Go Big Orange. Yes, that's right. Go Big Orange. Uh, go Vols. Uh, <laughs> can you sing Rocky Top? Do yeah. Rocky Top? <laughs> yeah, I know this. Yeah, I won't make you sing it. We're, we are so glad. Uh, to partner with you and can't wait for the future trips. Now, uh, Providence, we've got a trip coming up. Uh, we are going to uh, send off Zeka and Lillian, who are going to be planting this church uh, in Londrina. Uh, we are going to be part of that send off. And so, uh, Lord willing, uh, depending on um, international travel and all of those kind of details, uh, we'll be doing that at the end of July and the 1st of August. So, during that overlap of that end of month to the first of the month week. Uh, it'll be a seven day trip. In fact, uh, if, if everything continues, uh, we'll spend half the time in Campinas and then half the time in Londrina. And so uh, we'll, we'll be able to go to both places, see the city strategically. Uh, there's just a, a great opportunity uh, to have our folks be able to come back and some folks from Providence be able to come back and share about they've seen these church plants and they know what's going on. And so we're really excited about that. Rodrigo, thank you for your time. We'll continue to pray for you. And uh, man, Providence, thanks for investing. When you, uh, when you generously give and when you uh, give financially and your time and your investment, uh, God uses that. And, and what we want to do more than anything is to multiply it. And, uh, and that's what we get to be a part of. So thanks, brother, for your time. God bless you. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, Providence. We love you.